Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. Hello? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, are we going to start anytime soon? Um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, I can't see the the link where I can make my screen visible to share my screen from from uh, are you logged in as a presenter it's, I, I'm not uh, uh, I don't know how the go to meeting works yeah, yeah I have I used it one day uh, um, when Nita was here and it was fairly simple the the menu just dropped down from the top and I just clicked Oh, that was WebEx. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm not able to do this thing. And uh, today, I think Nita or North Nikta are there. I think, right? Hold on. Uh, if you are logged in as a presenter, you should see it. No, I, I, uh, I just uh, clicked on the mail that they had sent me the the with the link. Mm -hmm. And when I clicked on that, uh, when I clicked on that, it came to the to the. It says link for uh, Big Data Harub. That I have, there is a link for webcam. Share my webcam, but there is no share my screen. Okay. Yeah, you can see the webcam, right? Yes, I can see your webcam. And but I don't know are, how to. You are an organizer because you were able to turn off my camera. Uh, actually, from from this machine, I can't. Uh, uh, I can't see. I can just see. Um, I can just see GoToMeeting, um, the main screen, and then it says connected to GoToMeeting, and then it says uh, get get your own GoToMeeting or all that all whatever. And then on the on the left hand panel, I can see show your uh, control panel. Then it says you are muted by the organizer. Then it says no one can see you. Share your webcam. And then it says full screen mode. Uh, right now it's H2K Infosys is the presenter, but they had made me the presenter. But I think now because of this problem, they they took back the. Now it says presenter H2K Infosys. Now it doesn't say uh, the presenter. Where do you get? Where is the chat window? I don't see any chat window. I reached. I I closed. I closed the entire Firefox and then restart again. Restart full machine. So you want me to shut down the machine and start again? Yeah, I closed. I closed. Yeah, I closed Firefox and then I restarted the whole thing again. We even restarted our our, our, our uh, modem so that uh, we thought maybe there's something wrong with that. I do want to leave the machine. Yes. Hello. I'm not seeing the, any tap window here. 
do you, do you see an orange arrow on the right side of your screen or left side of your screen there? Uh, there, is, there, there is one screen that is coming up that shows. right because I can hear you you never locked off from your current session We can see your screen now. Hello? Hello? We can't hear you. Hello, you on? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. 
All right. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Aditi, and I'm so sorry uh, that the initial uh, setting up, there was some problem with the initial setup. Um, I'm very sorry, and I'm very, very uh, thankful uh, for you guys to be patiently seated. Um, I'll be talking to you about our new course um, that H2K Infosys is planning to offer. Uh, the one that you are all here to hear, um, that is um, about big data using Hadoop. Um, let me get my um, white screen, just uh, bear with me. I had all the initial setups ready, but then because of this uh, um, problem, they all went away and I had to close all of them. Anyway. Um, Like I said, our topic today is going to be on um, big data using Hadoop. And HQ Infosys is planning on starting this class as soon as uh, possible along with the other uh, numerous other classes that they have. And uh, the instructor for uh, this course uh, is going to be uh, me, Aditi. Um, and uh, my husband, uh, Jayant Datta. Um, uh, a couple of lines um, about us. Uh, I'm a consultant uh, with um, a company called Artsoft, um, uh, and um, my husband is um, a, a veteran in software. Uh, he's a technical director at uh, a big data startup company in the Silicon Valley here. Uh, oh, by the way, we are from uh, California. Okay. Um, with that, uh, let me uh, go to my um, actual slide. Um, here, um, I welcome you all again to H2K Infosys. Uh, it is a e-verified business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. Uh, they provide online IT training services worldwide, and their website is h2kinfosys.com. The number to reach them at in, in USA is 1-770-777-1269. Um, and uh, their email address is training at h2kinfosys.com, or you could even reach them at h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Now the courses that h2k uh, infosys offers are, are um, many. Uh, they are 100% job oriented, uh, instructor led, face-to-face uh, -face courses are also available through online live training. Um, the courses that they offer provide in-depth syllabus with latest technologies, uh, real-time project work to gain hands-on experience. Um, the, you can practice the, your work on uh, the, their cloud test lab. HGK Infosys provides you with recorded class videos for lifetime access. You can, you can go back to those videos and listen to them uh, whenever uh, you want to. Uh, H2K Infosys organizes mock interviews for you to help you um, do well in the interview sessions. They, ha they organize group discussions and they help you with professional resume preparation and resume reviews. Uh, finally, they see you through uh, the final stage of getting a job placement. So they help you with job placement also. Uh, in short, 
uh, H2K Infosys is trusted by many students uh, worldwide. Now, a very important instruction uh, while attending online classes is that um, we, we would uh, request you to use um, headsets and microphone uh, for the audio part, uh, or you could even use a uh, phone to dial the conference number with the attendee ID. Uh, however, for better audio clarity, we suggest that you use the headset and the microphone uh, duo. Uh, that keeps you keeps your hands free. Uh, you, you can write or um, type or do whatever. Okay, uh, and also please mute your phone and microphone for better audio clarity. All right. So the agenda for today is um, uh, to introduce you to H2K Infosys, talk, talk about us a little bit, uh, discuss what Hadoop is and why is the big commotion for Hadoop nowadays, um, why big data using Hadoop uh, is a hot career these days. Then, we'll, then I'll talk to you about the curriculum that we have planned for you. Uh, and also why you should consider taking this course at H2K Infosys. Why H2K Infosys has a competitive edge over other institutions offering courses like these. And finally, a uh, few words about the schedule of this course. So H2K Infosys is an e-verified business based in Atlanta, Georgia. We provide Hadoop training along with lots of other trainings to our customers both on-site and online. We also provide job placement assistance. Assistance while the candidate is on project. H2K Infosys is proud to boast of a clientele uh, such as General Electric, AT&T, Dish Network, Wells Fargo, Verizon, Sony, Bank of America, and you can, as you can see, the list is a huge one. We have a big background of great names. So H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals. They provide special IT training for MS students in the United States. H2K Infosys provides software design, development, QA manual, automation, performance testing, and maintenance. H2K Infosys provides IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance, and technical support. The courses offered by H2K Infosys are QA testing, performance testing, advanced courses in automation testing and performance testing, business analysis, Java J2EE, Microsoft.NET technologies, data warehousing, SAP module, Oracle SOA, and as you can see, the list is a long one down there. Now we introduce a new course, which is currently very hot in the market, that is Big Data Using Hadoop. And I'm here to talk to you about that. Um, now let's take uh, talk about Hadoop. Now why is this uh, fuss about Hadoop made these days? It all started with us getting overly technology dependent. Um, we share we share photos these days. We upload and download lots of uh, pictures, we send messages, and all of that creates huge amount of data. 
I read somewhere that um, a few companies like Yahoo, Facebook, Amazon, and a few more like that generate about 30,000 gigabytes of data every second. Now, this data is not very, um, is not useless data, I mean. Companies are using this data. And what are they using it for? They are using it to create analytics. And what does that mean? It means that um, they are using that piece of information to, 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 to understand the user's trend. Meaning, um, meaning for example, let's say they're trying to, by, by uh, going through the web logs, they're trying to find out uh, how many people are visiting the Macy's men's page, men's apparel page, let's say or how many people are actually buying uh, when there is a sale event. So they are using this data that we are generating, this huge amount of data that we are generating, and they are using it for their benefit. And b based on that, they are going on their, their, they are spending on their advertisement, they are planning on their advertisement, and things like that. Okay, so it's very useful data. And so then we have to find a way to store that data. Now the traditional, um, the traditional database systems that we have had is not capable of doing that. The, like, like I was just saying, the data that is being created is of the order of gigabytes, terabytes of, of uh, memory. It needs that much. And our existing systems are not capable of handling it. We have tried increasing the memory strength of our machines and making, making them more and more powerful. But how much powerful can we keep on? How much more memory can we keep on adding to uh, accommodate this amount of data, right? So, so that that was a problem, and that is why uh, we had to come up with a different system. Now, take, let's take this uh, example that I have on screen right now, uh, which, in which I'm I'm trying to um, go through a, a, a file, and I'm trying to count the number of um, number of words that there are in that. File, let's say. In this, in this case, I am handling uh, just a line for uh, simplicity of explanation. But uh, you, can, uh, you can extend this and think of um, it being a huge data. Okay? So here what I'm trying to uh, show you is that what I can do with a small amount of data is going to be very hard when the data becomes big. Now, when, it, when the data is small, things are very simple. I have one small data and I run a program on it to count the number of words that are there in it uh, using a program. And then um, I, from, as a result of the output of that uh, program, I find that there are uh, two do's in the, in the input. I find that there are two as's in the input. I find there are two I's in the input, and so on and so forth. There's one not and one say. This is pretty simple, if the, like I said, if the data is very small. But if the data becomes big, then we end up having lots of problems. Here, again, I try to um, emulate that process and, and uh, show you that the data is stored in the underlying file server and there are lots of uh, computers working on that data 
I'm counting the number of words that we input and the result from each computer is coming to one machine which is doing the final aggregation. This is how we are doing the work now and this is working fine uh, because uh, we can store the current data in this, in this file system because current data is not huge. But the problem arises because of uh, certain factors. Now let's see what those factors are. One, the the data is stored in a different place in our underlying database system and the data has to be pulled data has to be pulled from there by the program and and has to be worked on by the individual programs that are running um, simultaneously in parallel. So pulling the data through the network is going to take up time and it's also going to eat up the bandwidth and it's going to make the system slow. So that's problem number one. So problem number one is slow. It's going to take time to, to pull the data in order to work on it. Second problem would be that all these uh, computers which are running in parallel working on the data set, they are going to send the result to one computer. And that computer has to do a lot of work. Now what if the, the output from each individual um, computers uh, that are working on the data, the results from that, if that is very big? so big that this computer cannot handle it, then we have a problem. Also, if this machine fails, the one which is doing the aggregation, if that fails, then the entire result is lost. There's a lot of dependency on this. So, the new system that we had to come up with in order to use the big data had to solve those problems. And so Hadoop was made to solve these problems. So here in this um, chart I have um, listed down the major challenges that we, are, we had been facing and how Hadoop has solved those. And that's why Hadoop has become popular. We'll come to that later though. Now the first thing that, the first challenge that Hadoop, I mean, the first challenge that the traditional um, systems were facing is that the, uh, the size of the file was huge. The size of the data file was huge and we had to store those data files. Remember I said we are, we are making, we are creating um, data at the rate of about 30,000 uh, gigabytes per second. So the data file that we had to store, the companies wanted those data and so we had to store them. And there is no way of doing it right now. So what Hadoop did was pretty smart. They didn't keep the data in one place. They distributed the data. They split the data into multiple bits, multiple packets. And they also made it fault tolerant by replicating the data, making sure that no bit was lost, no split was lost. And that is done by 
the part of uh, Harup which is called as the Harup file system. The file system stores the data in it, but it stores it in a distributed and replicated way. So there, come, there is um, one problem solved. Second one, in order to, st when we were trying to store the, the incoming data, what we were trying to do in the traditional system was that we were trying to um, add memory upon memory and trying to make our computers um, more powerful so that they could store the incoming data. Of course, that had a uh, limitation that um, the computer's motherboard had to um, permit that. Um, but we kept on increasing it as, the, as long as it was permitted by the, by the design of the computer motherboard. And but that was becoming very costly. As we had to keep on increasing the memory, it was becoming very costly. But by the time Harup came up, the hardware companies had actually made up um, optical disk-based hard disks, which were cheap. And multiple of those computers using those type of disks would be, uh, started being used in Hadoop clusters. These were actually called commodity hardwares. commodity computers. Okay? So economic, optical, disk-based hard disks started to be used. And of course, it has to be cheap if you have to keep all those data, but we have to pay a huge price for it, then the companies don't want to do that. They want it cheap, right? So Hadoop became an economical um, solution uh, to their need. And so it was accepted. Third problem that the traditional systems were facing was, the, was that the critical final aggregation had to be done on a single machine. Remember the single machine that I was uh, ta talking about? The one that did the aggregation uh, from, from the other machines which were running the program? That final aggregation uh, was dependent on the single machine. Harup found out a way to overcome that too. It distributed the computing. Not only did it distribute the data like we were talking earlier, it distributed the computing. So the, so the, the, the program started running in parallel over multiple computers. So that way, uh, we didn't have to depend on one single uh, depend one single machine. Lastly, high volume of data had to be transported from the file servers to the computer that was doing the computation on the data. So data, like I was saying earlier, the data had to be moved from there from the file systems to the computer. And that was taking up time, that was eating up bandwidth, causing a lot of problem and making the system slow. Haru came up with a solution for that too. What did it do? What it did was very, very smart. It didn't pull the data to the task, like uh, it was being done um, by the traditional systems. it moved the task, which was smaller, to the place where the data resides. Data was kept and it remained and never moved from the uh, computers where it was stored. So that is what is called as data locality in Haru. Haru promoted data locality. Data remained in that, in that exact locale and the task which was going to work on the data moved there. That made it faster. To work on that amount of data, it became faster. And so now you see, we have a system, we came up with a system, Harup came up with a system that can solve our problems of doing some kind of math 
on the huge data that we are generating now. So what exactly is the formal definition of Hadoop? Sorry. Hadoop is an open source computing framework that supports the processing of large data sets like we have today in a distributed computing environment. It has a reliable, fault-tolerant, distributed file system and high volume of data can be processed with ease by using parallel computing. Its MapReduce development infrastructure enables us to read, write, and perform basic aggregation-like operation on the stored data in batches. Now, what does this all mean? Saying this in, in simple terms, Hadoop is an open source computing framework. Okay, so it's open source. Anybody can work on it and contribute to it. It's a computing framework. We can do math on the data, okay, that supports processing of large data sets. We can work on large data sets using Hadoop. And the, wor the way it works is that it distributes the computing environment, meaning it distributes the, the work is distributed among different machines. It has a reliable fault-tolerant file system, distributed file system. That is what is called as the HDFS, like I said earlier. So Hadoop's file system is reliable because data is never lost. It's fault-tolerant because it replicates and it uh, handles high volume of data. And it's MapReduce infrastructure helps in um, doing the computation on the data. It ha helps us enable read, write, and perform basic aggregation, as the sentence says. So these two are the underlying two technologies related to Hadoop. Now, Parallel computing is a, is a basic underlying thing in Hadoop. Now, parallel computing is not uh, anything new to us. We always... Um, uh, use parallel computing in our uh, daily lives. Uh, for example, um, uh, the, in factories, uh, in the assembly lines of factories, people work in parallel to complete a job. At home, if you want to clean our, our house, for example, and everybody, if every member of the family works together and work in parallel, they, um, they get the job done faster, right? Now, I want to draw your attention to, um, to one particular example that I'm uh, fond of, uh, which is, give me a minute. Um, which, uh, which, ta which is about um, the voting system that our uh, society has. Um, and I choose this example simply because um, um, it's very easy to understand MapReduce because MapReduce works exactly the same way. Our voting system is a classic example of parallel computing. Now, if you, um, let's say candidates A, B, and C um, are running the election. Now, when it's time to vote, Different people go to different um, polling booths. And cast their um, vote there. And voting uh, happens concurrently, simultaneously on all the polling booths. When, type, when, when the 
polling time is voting time is up, um, the the polling officer or whoever um, counts the vote, he or she counts the vote um, given to candidates A, B, and C on each polling booth. So you have polling officer working on the first booth, polling officer working on the second booth, polling officer working on the third booth simultaneously, and they count the number of votes that candidate A got, candidate B got, and candidate C got. And they they declare a result and say that candidate A has this many votes, candidate B has this many votes, and candidate C has that many votes. Now this happens simultaneously in multiple states. And when all the states have uh, uh, gone through their voting process, then they, then they aggregate all the um, vote that candidate A got from state 1, 2, 3, and so on. Candidate B has got from state 1, 2, 3, and so on. And candidate C has got from states 1, 2, 3, and so on. And finally, they do the aggregation and come out and uh, find out what is the total amount of vote that candidate A has got, candidate B has got, and candidate C has got. And based on that, the, they decide who is going to be the head of the state. That's exactly how um, Hadoop works as well. Let me erase this. Give me a minute. Now, in in Hadoop, uh, you there would be a client who would be. Uh, submitting a job and it would go to um, the Hadoop system. One would be the name node server which takes care of the data and which has multiple uh, nodes under it. And and it the these actually store the uh, data in it. This is the this is the part where the data is taken care of. The name node and the data nodes take care of the data part. And there is also the the computer which takes part which takes care of the computation on the data. Um, which takes care of the job called the task tracker. That's the uh, main computer, which also has um, um, multiple nodes under it. Because remember, the job is also distributed in, in Hadoop. Not only is the data distributed, the job is also distributed in Hadoop. And that is taken care of the task by the task tracker. Um, and it has multiple nodes underneath it. Uh, this, this one is the job tracker, and these are the task trackers. Okay, so as you can see, this Hadoop, in Hadoop, the data is split into smaller parts that is done by this server and is stored in multiple com computers. Those are those servers, those machines. And then the job is run on each of these computers in parallel 
and that is happening on the side of the of the picture where uh, the job tracker is taking up the function of splitting the job and then um, the job is run in parallel in these uh, machines that you see down here and as a result from the final um, the final result is uh, is sent back uh, to the job tracker and send and the client can see it, can see it. Now, you, you'll wonder why why Hadoop is so so popular. As you can see, Hadoop has actually overcome all the problems that are uh, initial traditional uh, systems were facing, and that is why uh, there is so much demand for Hadoop these days. Because most companies are moving towards Hadoop-based solutions these days, the number of jobs related to Hadoop is on the rise. And that is why learning Hadoop is going to benefit you. Now these are the job openings um, that you that you often see in the job market for related to Hadoop. Uh, they ask for Hadoop admin engineers. They are the people who administer Hadoop. They take care of the cluster. The, how, how many, uh, I mean, if, if anything goes wrong with the cluster, if any um, commodity uh, hardware, any commodity uh, computer were to die or crash, uh, they would replace it, change it, and make sure that everything goes on smoothly, there'll be no downtime, and so on. So that's the Hadoop administrator. The Hadoop development engineer is the one who programs, who does computation on the data that is stored in there. So he should be the one who should know uh, uh, programming languages like Java. They, sh they should be able to use SQL on the data uh, or, and some scripting language. Um, and some related technologies uh, like Hive, HBase, uh, Pig, and all that would help him accelerate in his career. The Hadoop Big Data Architect is responsible for the actual planning and implementation of all Hadoop based solutions. So he is like the mastermind. He decides um, which uh, technology to use, um, how, to, uh, how to find a solution for the problem that the company is trying to, how to use, how to, how to integrate uh, uh, Hadoop and find the solution. Basically, that's what his work is. Data scientists work mainly on the data. Their work is, is how to read the data from, from uh, Hadoop file system and figure out solutions to it. Now the course that we will be offering will touch base with all these, kind, all these um, positions and you can um, decide which one you would like to apply based on your um, interest and skill. Now, as you, you may be aware that it is uh, big data is a uh, hot, is currently very hot in the job market and the their, um, it's expected to grow to about 14 billion by uh, 2017. Now I would like to take this opportunity to actually show you some of the um, some of the the jobs that are currently available in the in the market. Uh, let's go to uh, my um, web web browser.
Okay, here we have uh, indeed.com. And uh, if I just put in Hadoop over there and ask them to find the number of jobs, you'll see that there are uh, over 8,000 jobs um, in the Hadoop area worldwide. And, it, and if you look, scroll down, you'll see the different um, types of positions. Okay? Now let's move, and let's see another one. Uh, this is usarecruit.net. If I type in, same way, if I type in Hadoop and ask them to find the number of jobs available, uh, again, they'll come up, they come up with 8,586 jobs. Now, Simply Hired, if I do the same, I'm just trying to show you the number of jobs available in the market these days. They come up with a number that's almost double, 16,194 Hadoop jobs in the market. So what I'm trying to tell you is that um, what I'm trying to tell you is that the the, the requirement is huge. There are uh, not so many people in the market who are experts in this field. So people are scramming, people are learning, and this is actually a very good time to switch your field and jump into this um, area. Here again I have um, some other names um, for uh, job searching sites and on the right side I have some um, names of companies which are looking for um, Hadoop people. Now let's talk about our syllabus. To attain, um, attain proficiency in this area, we have made a very uh, elaborate course. Um, we are trying to uh, keep our course to around 30 hours, um, including some mock interviews in it and some group, group discussions with review of um, uh, resume and all that. We'll be providing um, basic Java and Unix introductory courses for people who are not very uh, confident on those topics. Uh, then we'll talk about Hadoop. We'll introduce Hadoop. We'll talk about the Hadoop architecture. We'll help you install Hadoop onto your machines. Uh, now talking about that one, um, I, I would say that if you have a Mac, it's going to be easy for you to uh, install Hadoop onto it because um, Hadoop works on Unix and the underlying OS in Mac is, is Unix. Um, also, but however, if you are uh, having uh, a Windows machine, it is not um, it's not that you can't run uh, Hadoop on it. What you will have to do is you'll have to install a virtual box of some kind and then inside that virtual box you will have to put uh, some kind of Linux, Ubuntu Linux or something and then in that we will run Hadoop for you or rather you will run Hadoop and we'll help you. Um, then we talk about um, uses of Hadoop, then we go down to the main uh, section which is MapReduce. We'll, we explain how MapReduce works. We talk about the, the story behind it. We, sh we move on to show you a MapReduce development. We will show you a program and explain how the program works, the different parts of it, the hows and whys. Uh, and then finally you will write a program. Or actually you'll write 
more than one. All right, um, and then we'll talk about unit testing on MapReduce uh, using MR, MR unit and um, also if you have time, mock, mock it too. Um, and then we'll talk about how to customize MapReduce um, using different types of uh, key values, using custom key, custom value um, in your program. Talk, the next we talk about the input and output format where you, um, it's not just that you can um, um, analyze uh, text files, but you can also analyze, um, uh, let's say, XML, da XML data or maybe um, uh, binary files or even if the file is it's a, it's streaming data. So different kinds of input and output format, we talk about that. Uh, then we talk about how to I/O different logarithms algorithms that are used for uh, MapReduce. Um, how to administer Hadoop clusters. Then we talk about uh, the the next version of Hadoop, the next improvement that they have made in Hadoop, that is Hadoop 2.0 and uh, certain uh, technologies that are used in the Hadoop uh, ecosystem like um, HBase, Hive, Pig, um, Impala, Storm, and so on. Here you see uh, the detail of the uh, of each individual topics that I was talking about um, in Hadoop architecture uh, we'll talk about how it is made fault tolerant, how HDFS is, um, uh, HDFS as the file system works um, and all that. The same thing that I was talking in the previous slide this is just a detailed version I was just seeing it there and it's all written out here. You'll be given hands-on exercises like I was saying for uh, MapReduce when, uh, under the topic MapReduce hands-on. Um, you'll be using custom key composite keys we'll be using custom value class for customized map reduce. So you see we have a very detailed syllabus planned for you. These are the advanced topics. The last few uh, sessions will be on these. Now one question that I want to separately address, I know I, I, I said this while I was um, going over the um, syllabus, and this, the question that often comes back to us is that, um, is it important to know Java in order to know Hadoop? Uh, and is it, is it necessary to know Unix? Well, I would say uh, that you, you have to know a little bit of Java and a little bit of Unix. Um, to be to to feel uh, confident and be able to do work on uh, MapReduce um, comfortably, um, but if you don't, don't be disheartened. Uh, we we'll, like I mentioned earlier, we do have a session which talks about um, which in which we introduce these two topics, uh, Java and Unix, and we'll teach you that part of Unix and Java that you will need in doing your um, MapReduce in writing your MapReduce programs. So, um, as you can see, the syllabus is very ambitious, and we are both very excited to start the course. So, uh, please uh, enroll as soon as possible. Get in touch with the coordinators as quickly as you can. 
uh, call H2K Infosys at 1770-777-1269 uh, or email them at h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Once again, their phone number here is 1770-777-1269. I have a few questions, if you don't Yes, mind. yes. Um, I think the 30 hours duration is not sufficient at all, I think. You had to bump it up at least because, because this is like an integration of how to be 30 <laughs> hours. You need, you need, I think you need, as a trainer, I'm, uh, honestly, you should know it. 30 hours is not sufficient at all. You need at least uh, 40 to 50 hours. And um, I think, even, I think it's the, 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 que uh, the question is, um, Yeah. Hold, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Um, Hello. Hi. Yeah. The, the, he says that 30 hours is not uh, not sufficient. We need at least 40 to 50 hours. Um, yes, but the main focus of this would be uh, on um, uh, on MapReduce and um, and and the peripherals will be will be just introduced and we'll just give you a, a head start on that. Uh, as for the details of each of those parts, um, we'll have to, like you said, we'll have to split it into a second course or uh, third uh, and give you uh, in-depth knowledge on that. Then cut down a little bit. There's no other way. Quality is also directed towards <laughs> money. Yeah, but you can talk to SK. I can understand, like, you know, you'll be charging some amount of money, etc. But yeah, so that's why we thought of um, breaking this into 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 two parts, where wherein we could get people interested and they would come in and they would get the basic, and then we could move on and take it one step further based on how many people came and and you know you get what I'm what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah, I mean, at the end of this course. I'm not saying uh, you are going to become uh, uh, <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, And then we can take it to the next step. Why do you need, you know, say two months rigorous training? People will not understand that is not the inefficiency. So it is the participants' tolerance, participants' perseverance. So many things are involved in this. Yeah, but as so a trainer, you know, it's not a 30-hour course. It's easily 45, 50 hours. I can understand. You can split it, but uh, yeah. I think H2K should um, offer at least yeah, 40 yeah. hours. We will we'll talk to the organizers of H2K to to actually do the market study actually what actually the participants need uh, we may think something that to be competitive but that may not be always a success story so it depends on the actual participants also so your feedback is very important please convey this to STK Infosys either directly or via us yeah and all right one more, one more quick question if you don't mind like yeah. I am basically, I'm an integration guy. I'm in a middleware integration uh, plus a solution architect. So, okay. so what? How much in the switch time? Like you know, say I'm switching to Hadoop. Um, so I know a couple of guys who makes good money in New York City, pretty good money. So mm. my question is, um, so so what are the risks? Like you know, what are the chances I can quickly integrate? Like you know, I have some background. I have around. Are you doing in the Microsoft environment like IIS or say? No, no, I am actually, uh, I'm with IBM. Uh, okay. I manage around uh, 600 JVMs around, uh, okay. around around 19 major applications we support, uh, Bank of America and PNC. So, 
So I, when and when our IBM or infrastructure, so when when the new uh, concept is taking place, so we get go in with POC, and then uh, provide them like you know what are the tools for us as as uh, its integration team, uh, performance wise, application wise. When it conceived, we we give them a kind of a hands up. So my role is like um, yeah, I have a lot of exposure to Unix. Uh, Java. Yeah. I'm not a Java developer, but yeah. So your job actually involves a lot of technology stack to explore. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, conceptual so level. You are actually one good candidate for <laughs> passing this kind of profession where the new technology stack is added on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so you think the switch won't be uh, that much of a tough because I don't have any exposure to Hadoop. I know, like, and I've been reading a lot. Uh, no. A few weeks, but yeah. But I think the the switch should be easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because you know because you quickly you are adapting many technologies. So for this field, I think it will be easier for you because you you can touch. Oh, uh, is it something ideally somebody who has a lot of Oracle background? Somebody. Oracle background. No. no. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Oh, back end database. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oracle C is the basically my SQL. Uh, sorry, SQL stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, people do the Oracle doesn't mean just Oracle. Somebody writes JDBC programming. Somebody writes mm -hmm. you know the other kind of SQL. SQL. There are different kinds of skills people do. Somebody does DBA. So who does DBA? Modeling and database. Okay. So what is it? No SQL. Like you know, do you guys be so, touching, clarifying on that? Just touch. So there are no many SQL databases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are planning to add that course. It cannot be included here. There is another, you know, oh, huge, okay. huge thing. A lot of stuff. So mm -hmm. we will we, we are you know, willing to do that. Even you know the easier part like how you say another very fast programming. You know the scripting is the key. Big. Yeah. Are, like you know touching Uzi. So Uzi, you know, I will at least take you know maybe. So the hours to give you really good experience. So these all we need time and good. You know, I mean, if you have to go into depth of each one of them, each one of them will be one one course on on its own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, uh, what mm -hmm. when uh, that's why that that was the last thing in the syllabus where we just introduce you to what they are. The main focus of this one is just um, uh, Hadoop with its MapReduce, HDF, yeah, HDFS and MapReduce is the main focus of this. So we'll just one step at a time. Okay. Yeah, I get the better idea. Yeah. So somebody with the average background, like you know, so what is the expectation in the market? Like somebody is, is a newbie. So how are he? How are his potential? Like you know, as a Hadoop consultant, say for example, as a Newbie. It's for a newbie. Yeah. See, I, I, I joined this course and do a 40 hour course. Hmm. And then I do my homework properly. And then, like, you know, what are the chances for, for us to sneak in into a project? That's, that's the development, actually. And, and it'll be. Like yeah. Job, like data transferring. So yeah, he can get, he can move into that yeah. field easily. So that is the easy part for you, actually. Say, for, you know, data ingestion. Move. Move from conventional data storage like Teradata, okay, or yeah. say Oracle. So they want to transfer. To Hadoop. Another part is actually we can discuss later on from the structured data. But is it expensive? Like you know, the implementation part is could be very expensive, right? It's no, actually not. No, actually, actually not. It's not that costly. 
Huh. Because they, it, because like I was just saying, it it uses uh, lots of uh, mid-range um, type of uh, c computers, and they are connected in parallel. Yeah. And if one dies, you just throw that away and bring another one, and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have used data. So mainly one kind of activity you are trying to process. Say I want to find the max and the maximum, you know, the uh, say salary. Number of, you know, maximum salary within this day. Okay? Within mm -hmm. this age group. That kind of information if you try, then that huge data if you try to execute on or Oracle or Terra data like environment, pro at all proprietary environment you have to go on paying. The other thing is those servers and you know they need powerful servers you will spend on hardware a lot. But and the another thing is the fault tolerance, you know. How mm -hmm. it comes with the very lowest uh, the uh, data availability is called. So always you will be sure that you will get the data if you query and that will come very fast. Yeah. And it can handle the you know unstructured data. You don't need to write, you know, the schema and if you want to change the schema, then execute alter, put some default values, then you know, sometimes purpose goes bad, you run the statistics, reorganize the data, truncate, those all problems will go away. You don't need to do any update or delete operations, just one story. Okay. Okay. With technology, most of the five systems I am expecting will be you know, changed to Hadoop. Like operating system will work directly on Hadoop. Like Microsoft Windows may we, we, the, use the file system HDFS. That is High Vista is a uh, High Vista Apache application, right? High Vista, you know, on the top of Hadoop, you you know add another metadata store so that mm -hmm. Hadoop can be used for querying using the SPS statement. Okay. So and it slows down a lot because for every piece it requires one map to use. So directly, mm -hmm. uh, if you use hype on the top of Hadoop, you will not mm -hmm. get the performance. You will have to use stays in between that, so that Hadoop uh, directly is not accessed by hype through page. So that is the solution people are now trying to implement. There are other productions like Impala that mm -hmm. does much higher performance uh, still you know, query on the top of Hadoop. Oh, okay. All right. You're all right. Thanks for your time. Okay, no problem. You're yeah, welcome. welcome. Any more questions? Anyone else? Okay. Yeah, when do we anticipate the course to start? Uh, beginning of April, yeah. And do we have any idea of uh, what the schedule is going to look like? Uh, is it going to be two two days a week or everyday courses? Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, it would be nice if you would talk to the H2K Infosys coordinators for that. Okay. Is this is this your first course with H2K? With H2K, yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other question? Is anybody there? Hello? No, I guess we're good. You're good? Who is this? Vamshi? No, this is Kishore. Oh, okay. So do you see any HTK coordinators there? Hello? Uh, Vamshi. Hi. Vamshi here, Jen. Hi. So, uh, 
it looks as if they have uh, no more questions. Ask them if they have any more questions or else we can call it a day. Guys, if anyone has any questions, please uh, discuss with the faculty and the rest of the things. Okay, so please call to 770-777-1269 so that we can help you the better, okay? Okay, guys. Okay, then. So thank you very much, guys, for okay, joining thanks. the class. Thank you, yeah. Thank you all for coming. Bye-bye. Call, call H2K and sign up. So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you're interested in a demo program, please register on our homepage on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-1269. One seven six one five. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.